let's see if Facebook stays up as late as Instagram. Might have to go say hey over there. Y'all up? Hello. Just trying to see if anybody else is up. It's a little late for some of y'all. Might try tomorrow. <sighs> it's been a long day. Hey, Adisa. I know you've been working too. <laughs> I know V is working hard because I'm about to call her them and ask for some more work. <laughs> I got to get with you for training, girl. Hey, Eldon. Vernon. Oh, y'all are up. Okay, hey. Didn't know if I was have to go to Instagram and play tonight. <sighs> exactly. Adisa, that is the face I wear <laughs> every day. <laughs> oh, we got government workers up in here. I know y'all are tired. I know y'all are tired. Y'all work hard to help us out. Oh, my goodness. So I just, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot. And y'all don't have to stick with me for the whole thing because I'm going to keep it up there. Hopefully, Facebook doesn't take this back down like my last post. But, um... You know, it's been a while since I've done a live and it's been a while since I've consistently posted. And um, I really had to contemplate why and what was getting in the way of my words. And I, and I figured it out because the University of Twitter will teach you some things. But um, one of the tweets that really has resonated with what I needed to hear personally was about this idea of everybody having their lane. And so like... There's a lane for protesters. There's a lane for there's a lane for counselors. There's a lane for uh, organizers, and I would add there's a lane for legislators. And so, I really think what caught me off guard is I've had my feet in some of those lanes, and I think in this moment I was trying to have my feet in all of those lanes, and it just was like no. Nah. And my friend, Delegate Jeffrey Bourne, always tells me, um, stay ready and you ain't got to get ready. Well, the week before a lot of this popped off, I had not been practicing self-care. <laughs> so I was like, I was caught off guard, completely caught off guard. And I just needed to retreat in order to get my mind right. When I come on these platforms, I know the trolls are going to be there. Every single word I say, every single hand gesture, what I'm wearing, like everybody has judgment, whether they like it, they don't like it, whatever. And it was just a lot for the moment. So I finally was like, okay, there are 83,000 people like dependent upon you to be in a lane and that lane is delegate. And so yesterday I woke up and just everything started clicking like bam, 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 let's go. So Tempest has set up a few meetings and I am posting this on my personal page. So please understand blocking, deleting, completely legal. Please know that trolls. But um, Tempest has set up some meetings and I knew that the best thing for me to do in my lane was to get to the work. And as much as I wanna be on the front lines right now, I am high risk. And I was apologetic for not being out at the protests and not being out at the rallies. And it hurt because y'all know I'm, I'm usually out there, but I also know what's coming. I knew that whenever the governor calls a special session, I need to be healthy and at my best so that this voting finger and this voice that I use at the Capitol would be ready for me to do my work in my lane. And so this is, I think, a learning opportunity for a lot of us about self-care, A. Eh? Because the way 2020 is going, <laughs> I don't know if it's going to get better before it might get a little worse. 
Um, and if you are already at capacity, do not read the predictions about the hurricane season. That was a mistake as well. <laughs> but, but, um, but yesterday was just amazing. And I'll get, I'll get to that real quick. But, um, but the post that I put up today, I think it all ties in. So I'm, I'm, I'm in my lane now. Like I'm, I'm, I'm clear. I'm clear. I'm in my lane. And today there was an article about uh, Congressman Scott and Don Scott, Delegate Don Scott, freshman Delegate Don Scott, and um, the work that they're doing. And it attributed it to the recent protests. And there are two things that can be true at the same time. We are seeing national change right now in this moment with a quick pace. I'm talking about LA moving 100 to 150 million dollars into communities of color. I'm talking about, you know, lots and lots of changes that are happening already while the protests are still going on. That is true. But I also want to make sure that we give and pay homage to the people that have been doing this work for years. I mean, years. And I, I started to put out, um, you, I, I put out this message. And so it, it paid homage to Senator Yvonne Miller. She was the first African-American woman to serve in the Virginia House of Delegates, then became the first African-American woman to serve in the Virginia or Senate of Virginia. And as much as people want to talk about how racism is, is long gone, what she dealt with just 36 years ago, within my lifetime, what she dealt with when she was the only black woman in the House and the Senate is unimaginable to some. And then the work that um, helped, sorry, got a call. <laughs> the work that she did helped me to be able to be where I am. And so I pay homage to all of the people that have been doing this work. So what was really strange was they were attributing Congressman Scott's statement about the Death in Custody Act to new energy. And I'm like, no, pu put the things where they need to be. The, the budgetary changes that are happening and some of the new movement, new energy. And you don't let people off the hook. You ask them, why did it take so long? But I have pictures and video of Congressman Scott talking about the Death in Custody Act right after Freddie, Freddie Gray was murdered. And so it's kind of like, we have to understand how some of this has been a sustained fight for 401 years. Because if we get disillusioned enough to think that change happened immediately, that's, that's just not the case. It has been a sustained effort. And all of the actions today are building on actions before. And so Don Scott may be a new delegate, but he's been working for justice for long before he became a delegate. And so I just wanted to uplift that. And then on Twitter, I'm uplifting, like, if y'all are talking about, um, if y'all are talking about prosecution of bad cops who have murdered people, and you're not saying Stephanie Morales' name, I need y'all to look that up right now because we have giants among us in Virginia who have been doing the work. And so, yes, immediate change is happening because of the work today. And those on the front lines, I, I, my family is out there on the front lines. Like, the protesters keep putting on the pressure that is true while also understanding that the boardroom the courtroom the committee room the house floor is all connected it is absolutely all connected and so i my my new activists i i ask you to do your history take a moment even through the anger through the pain do a little bit of reading because it's, it's, it does something to know that I've, been, I've only been doing the work for, for since 2016. So let's be clear. 
But when I get an angry email demanding that I draft legislation for a bill that I have been carrying for four years, I'm like, okay, let me, let me just let you know, I'm not new to this, but for, for three of them years, I, I was um, fighting a little bit of an uphill battle because I was in the minority, not only as a Democrat, but as a black woman, but as a progressive black woman who isn't afraid to speak out. And then this year, a progressive black woman who was still in the minority because a democratic majority does not equate a progressive majority. And I got doxxed. I got threats. I, I still have, you know, people mad at me on both sides of the aisle. So it's kind of like, just know who are your real allies in this. And yeah, you know, politics is messed up. It really, really is. And I have to stomach that every day. And I keep coming back, keep coming back because I know that change is possible because we're already starting to make it. And this is not for kudos for me. This is not for shine. This is not for anything. Just to say, even do the history from before when I was there, when I was born, my uncle was in the House of Delegates fighting racism. And if you know the story about how he even got elected fighting against racist golf courses, you know, like, let's be clear that Virginia has had fighters and fighters. If you don't know the story about Barbara Johns, if you don't know these stories, then you might feel like you're out here lost and alone. And you're not, you're a part of a continuum of people that were born to fight. It's in our DNA. And unfortunately, you may not see the fruit of your labor in your lifetime. So you've got to also reach to the younger generation to connect to them because this work has to continue until all of the changes that we uh, want to see are, you know, are, are happening. And so while I am, you know, I, I am, I am giving respect and honor to all lanes while also seriously for probably the most clarity I have ever had in this position. Um, I am clear. So fast forward, right, to, or rewind, I don't know where we are. It's a pandemic. Um, but yesterday when I woke up with that clarity and Tempest had set up those meetings, I got up, I um, sat down and had some of the best conversations I've had. And the question is, when you have a national conversation, you have to sometimes translate it to the state level and to the local level. So when we're asking for and demanding for things, they might be in terms that don't necessarily translate. So not every state has the same name for their laws or the same way that they go about even making laws. And so we were going through, okay, how does this happen? How does this happen? How does this happen? Okay, where are all of the points of entry that we can come up with some of these changes? And I was bringing voice to some of the conversations that I've had with um, constituents that have been justice involved. I was bringing in voices from advocates that I've been talking to. I was bringing in voices from other politicians and just asking, asking questions. And that's one of the things that I do not have a problem doing. <laughs> like I will ask the question if I have it. And, and one of the benefits that I have found of having someone born and raised in the 95th district being in these rooms is that I ask different questions than some of the other people do. Um, so these questions then led to conversations that I had with a few more of the experts that know Virginia code in and out. And I am looking very much forward to rolling out a package of seven bills that whenever is the next opportunity, I will be introducing in a concerted effort with um, some other folks that are really championing the cause for justice. And so I know the Black Caucus is looking to see what we can do with the Crime Commission. But even with the Crime Commission, I was reminded you got to get the majority of the crime commission on board, but all of this, any of the ideas that we may have that translate into legislative action has to pass 21 votes in the Senate and 51 votes in the house and then be signed by the governor or overwritten. So, um, that is humbling because sometimes we want change to be instantaneous. But here's where you come in. If you've never been to Richmond, 
If you've never been at a public meeting, if you've never been to a city council meeting, if you've never been to a school board meeting, all of this is connected and there are entry points for you to do activism and organizing and advocacy. And so as you try to find your lane, if you don't already have one, hit me up. I can, I, we can ask a couple of questions and see what is your passion? Where can you plug in? There are organizations that are doing this work that have been doing this work. Y'all know my day job is with Virginia Block. We would love to have you come do organizing work with us. If that's not your lane, then and you, you know, you want to do a lot of social media, be informed about what the real issues are so that it's not just a hashtag. It's actually getting people to take action. But, um, Yesterday was really good. And, and so when <laughs> when um, my nephew was in town uh, during the, the height of the pandemic, uh, their hometown went through a lot. So he was in town. My mom and my sister would sit with him at the end of every day and they would do this thing called reflections. And they would ask him, what did you do? Um, what did you like about the day? What was your favorite part of the day? And get him to draw a picture about something that he remembered from the day. And it warmed my little heart that sometimes he would say, hanging out with Tia or, you know, when I rode my bike with Tia or, you know, something, oh, I had a Polaroid camera and I would take pictures, Polaroid pictures with him. And he really liked that. And it was, it was just a moment that you just stop and think about how that day went. And yesterday was the first time in a long time at the end of the day, I could stop and reflect and say, okay, this is what I liked about it. This is how it went. This is what I need to do tomorrow. And it really got this ball rolling. And I've checked in with other legislators and they're working on their lanes too. And so the interesting part is we have serious and urgent needs in a lot of different areas. And we still don't know what special session will entail. Uh, there's the governor calls us in for special session, but the legislature decides, the, le the leadership uh, and um, the legislature decides what is allowed to be talked about. So are we just doing the budget? Are we doing budget and new bills? Not sure. But um, if we're only doing budget, then these bills that we are working on now will be for January. Uh, if during special session, new bills are allowed, that is going to be really, really, really important to pay attention to. There's some things that we need to fix with how evictions are happening during the pandemic. There's a lot of things that COVID has uncovered uh, that a lot of folks with lived experience could have been told y'all. They've been telling y'all for years that this stuff was going on. But now more people are seeing it because it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, it's happening to me now. Okay, cool. So depending upon what we're allowed to carry in special session, I need y'all to stay and pay attention because just like... LA just made that bold move of investment. When we talk about the budget, the budget is a bill. The budget is a statement of priorities. The budget is us deciding how your tax dollars are going to be spent. So if you've never paid attention to a budget, I'll put a link in during our session. We did a, a online webinar about budget and we talked with people from uh, the Commonwealth Institute uh, who crunch numbers and give you real life application for how the numbers are adding up or not. And uh, Delegate Air was there with me for that. So I'll put that link so you can watch that. But here's, here's my point. If your lane is reading and your lane is helping to digest information to get it back out, we need you because we need to get a lot of people up to speed on how these systems work so that we can change it. Uh, we need a lot of people to understand how important the budget is when we're talking about where we are spending money. And if, you know, get people engaged in that. Now, I can tell you, that is not a sexy issue. <laughs> it is not, it's not always fascinating, but it's important. If your lane is talking with me about police reform and what you wanna see change in the 95th district, Please be patient with me because my day job is also ramping up now where we're next week going to be onboarding a whole new team of people that are doing digital organizing. And so I, I do have responsibilities everywhere, but we're doing both jobs. Tempest is working every day. Uh, shout out to Tempest. I, just amazing work. Uh, she's working right now on helping people get connected with the unemployment benefits that they may have um applied for but haven't gotten so see a previous post for that but basically like we need to be in all the lanes um 
The other, the other thing that I'm seeing online that I just want to address real quick, and I promise I'm not going to hold y'all long because I'm tired, but I am seeing like, I'm, I'm right sandwiched in between some two passionate generations and I am witnessing y'all having the same conversation with each other, but miscommunicating it completely. So in response to a lot of this, I'm seeing the older generations answer with four letters, vote, and they mean it. Like they are not playing with you. They want you to vote. And I am seeing a younger generation filled to capacity with rage and anger and passion, rightfully so, because of their lived experiences as well. Say, but we need these changes. Don't tell me to vote. We need these changes. And they list out the changes very eloquently. The disconnect is when they're saying vote, they may not say the rest of the words, but that's what they mean. If you look at whether it's campaign zeros, eight points, or the NAACPs, if you look at any of the lists of demands, you've got to understand how those changes happen and who's at play. So A, when you're talking about voting for president, I'm hearing about holding votes hostage and stuff like that. Don't play with me. Because I know that between two candidates, one Department of Justice would act one way and another would act another way. And I'm, I'm really glad that the military is stepping up and saying that this isn't their job. But one president would call the army to come fight its own people and another one would not. One is putting judges on these benches that will just... It's going to be a lot of work to fix the damage that is being done right now. So if you don't see vote as power and if you don't see vote as protest, call me, text me, 757-266-5935. Not even kidding. Text me. Let's talk. Because when you're saying we want better training, okay, there's uh, minimum standards of learn of training that are at decided in the executive branch. So that, determ that is determined by... Um, who is in the governorship and chooses some of the folks that will be in the Department of Criminal Justice Services working with the committee that does that. That is also within the state legislature because we decide are those recommendations or are those mandates. That is within the, um, the locality side because the mayor and city council might, if you, if you have a system like Hampton and Newport News, the mayor and city council, a council hired the city manager, the city manager hires the police chief, the police chief manages the, the, the police. So, so when we say vote, most of these changes are either being held up by elected people or could be helped by elected people. And so the, the demands that we have and the action that we take to get the right people in place to get those demands, that is the same conversation. Y'all are just using different words. And so when uh, the other night, Virginia Black had a meet and greet and we were online and I was listening to college students and just saying, okay, they, they just have different words. And then I'm listening to my parents and my friends and sorority sisters and they just have different words. But if this wasn't for COVID, trust and believe, we would have been doing voter registration at these protests. They go hand in hand. And if at this moment, your choice is to protest by not voting, I want us to talk. I seriously, I'm I, I'm not even mad. Like, I just want us to talk. Shame is not going to work. So if y'all sitting there throwing shame at these people, trying to get them to vote, that's not going to work. That's, mis that's further miscommunication and division. Um... Also, just to be clear, throwing out history to them that we haven't made sure is in the curriculum or the history books that they haven't learned it. We dropped that ball. Don't do that. Don't do that. The best way to talk to somebody about them seeing their own power, I have found, is to ask them what they care about and then help them understand how that is impacted by voting. And that has, that has taken me a long way with folks. Um, yesterday, I also had the pleasure of being on a Zoom with some Woodside High School students. And they had amazing questions. They are listening. They are watching. 
These kids can't vote yet. They're depending on y'all to get this right, right? And they are saying, like one of them asked me, so remind me again, like, what is it you do? And I had, okay, this is what I do. Oh, okay. And then the other one built on that. So if I wanted to get with you with some of my feelings about what I need to see change, what is that? How does that look? And I broke down, y'all get together, get a diverse group of people together, students, y'all talk about what you want to see from the time you wake up to the time you lay down. What is it and how you navigate in life? What do you see that you want to change in your home, in your neighborhood, in your community, in your city, in your school, in the nation? and let's walk through it. I can tell you who to call, how to call them, what to say, and help learn the system so that we can dismantle the dysfunctional parts of the system. They they were not old enough to vote, so I'm thinking they were either 15, 16, or 17. And telling them about some of the changes that are coming July 1st because voting matters. And this year, the General Assembly looked different because voting matters. And some of the things that we are gonna take for granted after July 1st, some of the things that, you know, I'm getting text messages, can't wait for July 1st because y'all plan on doing some stuff. Now they're going to talk about it here. Please wait for July 1st. But July 1st is bringing and ushering some significant change in your everyday life because voting matters. And so, no, I'm not telling you vote for me. I'm not even on the ballot right now. I'm not telling you who to vote for. I'm not telling you that voting is about a particular person. It's not. Voting is about the power that you have and the exercising of the right that you have in order to impact change. And so there's no perfect person that will ever be on a ballot. And the other thing that is so fascinating to me is this idea that a candidate has to generate the excitement for someone to go out and vote. And I'm still trying to understand that. So if that is your feeling, I, I do want to talk because I, I don't understand that because what motivates me to want to vote is all of the things that I just said, like the people that make the decisions, where are we putting our money? What is the Department of Justice going to do in times where we need them to be about justice? What is the House of Representatives doing that's great, but the Senate is holding up? Like these parts that are super dysfunctional, I know that my vote impacts that. I know that when I voted locally, that, you know, when that COVID millions are coming into cities, those people who are on city council will be the ones deciding how that money is spent. I know that the people that we are electing right now will be the ones that help us rebuild our communities and our state and the nation after this pandemic is done doing its damage. And so, no, I have four politicians currently in my family, including myself. None of us are perfect. I'm not caping for none of us. What I'm saying is I do know that all four of us are committed to the things that we need to do in order to get real reform and real change. And so I honor the work that is being done in all of these lanes, but understand they're all connected. They're all connected, every single one. And if your lane is counseling and you have enough money to do some pro bono services, y'all, let's get some serious mental health services out to these folks that life creates PTSD, right? Or, or get resources to people that need to be connected with them as we are processing whatever lane it's in, uh, because this idea of self-care cuts across all of the lanes. And so I just want to say, like, there's so many places where you can plug in. There's so many places where you can plug in. Um, somebody's going to get mad at me, but I was talking with my team earlier, like, it's real cool to turn your Instagram black for the day or whatever y'all decide to do. It's real cool to like some of these corporations that are putting out these statements. I'll even say some of these live, I mean, some of these allies that, um, that I'm watching. I don't really want the frou-frou shit. We are at a moment that is make or break and it feels different. But what it's going to take is different action. So for my supposed allies that have called themselves my friends, I'm not looking at your public statement that three, four, five people might have read over. I'm looking at your votes. I'm looking at your actions. And to the folks that are out here asking me for book lists and stuff, I'm, I don't have it. I don't have it. You are grown people. 
If a child wants to ask me for resources, I will answer. I don't have anything for you. Google, Siri, Alexa, they got it all. And there are people whose lane it is to teach. So I need you to hit up the professors. I need you to hit up the journalists. I need you like Tempest was posting the other day. Listen to the 1619 Project. Listen, Google is there. I love you. Please stop asking me for stuff unless it's a constituent-based concern. But wherever your lane is, take care of yourself so that in these next months, you can be your best you because this is what this, this, this moment calls for. And one last thing, sometimes it's hard for us to find joy in moments that are heavy that come with such emotions as rage. But uh, to the class of 2020, the last four years have held enough for you to deal with. And on top of that, you finished, whether it was high school, whether it was college, my bad, two year degrees, whatever you are graduating from, you put in work. And half of y'all done finished through this end <laughs> during a pandemic, trying to figure out Zoom, trying to figure out <laughs> having to get ready so you can be on the camera. You guys finished. You are graduating. Give yourself permission to celebrate. Absolutely celebrate. And take this moment to be proud of yourself for what you got through in order to get to this moment, who you became as you went through the fire because you arrived at this moment for a reason, for whatever the lane is that you're in as well. And I just wanna remind you, like I said on an earlier post, this moment should just remind you that we need you to do something with that piece of paper that you earned. And really figure out what is something meaningful? What is your purpose? What is your next step going to do that helps us achieve this change that we seek? And if you're still looking and you're still searching, that's fine. Um, I have had my feet in a bunch of lanes because what I thought were detours was just, it was just a curvy journey. And so, um, so I look forward to seeing what the class of 2020 is going to do in these coming years because I can tell you my generation, we dropping all kinds of balls. My parents' generation, they, they dropping all kinds of balls. This next generation, like we really need y'all to step up to the plate on some stuff so that we can work together. But um, but literally, like celebrate. And, and I honor you. I'm going to be doing, I think I'm uh, attending the virtual thing for Bethel High School. Uh, and then I'm going to do... Um, something with uh, with Newport News. But again, like I started this out, right now is not my lane to leave the comfort of my home. And I, I my heart is with you, but my doctor said stay home. So I'm gonna listen so that I can be in good health and ready to vote and speak up for special session. So whatever is is that is gonna entail, uh, we, we do some really big things in special session that will get us that first step in Virginia of legislative change that we seek. 757-266-5935. Uh, Text us. That's me and Tempest. Uh, if you still need help getting in touch with whatever the unemployment benefits are that uh, you've been applying for and the systems may not have been working for you, get in touch with us. If you need to know where to plug in because you're trying to find your lane and you really want to talk it out, please reach out to us. There's a lot of work to do. And if we all do our part and we all stay in our lane and just perfect our craft, we are going to get these changes we are going to get everything it is that we deserve and we seek when we say justice and we say peace. And um, I'll just end with Black Lives Matter every day. They always did. They always will. I love you guys. I will talk to you soon.